media platform on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, Instagram, and Uche, our guest. Oh, yes, we have a guest from um, the Lagos University Teaching Hospital. He's Dr. Osewegi Nosa Harvey, a senior registrar in the Neurology Unit, Department of Internal Medicine in Luz. You're welcome, Doctor. Good morning. Thank you very much. Good morning. And thanks for coming. Thank you. Okay, we're looking at stroke this morning, and just before we came on board, I was saying that uh, maybe growing up, it wasn't something we're used to. It became rampant in the late 90s into the year 2000. But before we go into what causes um, stroke and then preventive measures, let's, for the benefit of viewers, let's get into what stroke really is, because people just think stroke is... Okay, so... Uh as, well, first of all, stroke actually is an, it's an emergency. It's a neurologic okay. emergency. So it means if it happens, you better get that individual to the hospital as fast or as soon as possible. Okay. So it's often said that whenever anybody has a sudden onset neurologic deficit of vascular origin, mm. that's what we refer to as stroke, and it often lasts more than 24 hours. Okay, doctor, you have to break it down. Break it okay. down. <laughs> Those words, uh, most people are not really understanding. You okay. said neurological de oh, oh, deficit. Oh, so, yeah. okay, so what happens is that uh, the brain con controls every part of your body. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when you have an issue or uh, a stoppage of blood supply to a part of the brain, so that part of the body that the brain controls mm. absolutely stops working immediately. Okay. So that's what we mean by sudden, so it's immediate. All of a sudden, mm. I meet an individual, we're talking, and all of a sudden, he tells me his hand can't move anymore. Mm. Mm. No prior problems, nothing. Mm. So that's why we say sudden. And what we say is it's of vascular origin, meaning it involves the blood vessels supplying blood mm. to the brain. Okay. And it lasts longer than 24 hours. Yeah, but doctor, what I really don't understand, you just said it could be very sudden, and an, it is an emergency, but are you saying there could be no point as all of a sudden you just um, come down with stroke? Okay, so uh, that's where we have risk factors. Mm. But unfortunately, quite a number of people don't know they have these risk factors. How many Nigerians know they have high blood pressure? Mm. Very few, because we don't go uh, to the hospitals to check. We don't get proper checkups. And so most of them are hypertensive, most of them are diabetic, and they don't know. Mm. So that's... Uh, one of the problems we have in this country. Mm. So okay. that's one of the reasons why most or some people that come down with stroke ab initio do not know they have the risk factors. Okay. Yes. Okay, that's good to know that those are part of the risk factors, not yes. like that is the only... No, no, there are quite a number. Okay, can quite you mention a, a few more? Okay, so when we say risk factors, we means, uh, it means that uh, when you have these factors or when you have these characteristics, mm. it, uh, you are more likely to come down with stroke. stroke. And chief among them is hypertension, which is persistent elevation in blood pressure. Mm. That's uh, very, very uh, one of the most important risk factors. Others mm. include, as I said earlier, diabetes mellitus. Mm. You have smoking, you have dyslipidemia or hyperlipidemia, which the public call uh, excess or too much cholesterol in the body. Mm. Mm. Uh -huh. So I've mentioned smoking, that one is a no no factor. Then excess alcohol consumption mm. okay. is another risk factor. Sedentary lifestyle. Those that sit in one particular place almost all day. Whoa. Mm. Overweight or obese people. Mm. These are risk factors. Then if it runs in family lines, family history, it can be genetic. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Before, we get down, before we get down to what, cause, uh, what causes um, stroke, uh, are there uh, variants of um, stroke? Oh, yeah. there are types of strokes. Okay. So likewise, treatment are uh, also a little different for each of them. Basically, there are two broad types. You have the ischemic, which we often describe as if, you know, I told you earlier that it has to do with the blood vessels mm -hmm. supplying blood to parts of the brain. So what happens in the ischemic type of stroke uh, is like the, the blood vessel is blocked. Just like you mm -hmm. have a pipe bringing out water from the tank and all of a sudden it's plugged. Mm -hmm. So at the extreme end no longer receives the water. So the mm -hmm. same thing with stroke. If it's an ischemic stroke, all of a sudden that blood vessel is blocked and blood does not get to various parts of the brain supplied by that blood vessel. The other one, it's uh, often, it's called hemorrhagic stroke. Mm. And we describe it as uh, a burst vessel. So mm. just like having a pipe also going down and then all of a sudden it got burst. You have blood spilled everywhere in mm. the brain. Mm. So it can spill in the brain tissue proper 
or it can spill in the spaces. When it spills in the brain tissue pop, I would say it's intracerebral hemorrhage. That hemorrhage simply means blood. blood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then if it spills in spaces around or surrounding the brain, we call that subarachnoid hemorrhage. But those two are often re referred to as hemorrhagic stroke. Okay, we know that generally there are so many causes, but for you to have an um, ischemic um, stroke, yes. what could be the cause for the cloth? Right now, you're trying to make us feel like there's a blood cloth somewhere yes. that does not allow the free flow of blood. Yes. And as well as that of hemorrhage, I know that could be maybe your fall, a fall with the head or okay, something. Okay, so that's absolutely different. When okay. uh, it results from a fall, that's okay. trauma. Yeah. Mm. That's no longer a stroke. Okay. Oh, okay. It's a non -trauma traumatic. Uh, experience okay okay so exactly i see but i like to know when it comes to stroke now management and then reoccurrence and you said people who 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 almost suffered stroke and they was well managed and after a couple of time it looks as if there's a reoccurrence and then we want to know if um, after treating um, stroke if it has complete um, um healing that you're perfect you can actually be healed of, of stroke and be perfectly fine, be, be normal again. And um, also the case of where they say only um, few people that go through stroke comes out of it. Can you please shed more light on this? Okay, uh, first of all, what we preach is, I uh, often say, uh, when you have a stroke, it's often referred to as a brain attack, just like mm -hmm. you have heart attack. Mm -hmm. So time is of the essence. Mm -hmm. okay. This person or this patient needs to present as, as fast as, as possible, 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 so okay. that the treatment can tick, start off as soon as possible, possible because there's a time window for you to salvage as much as you can mm -hmm. uh, usually it's three and a half hours wow. where wow. it is done where you have ischemic stroke where we say the blood vessel is blocked if you come within three and a half hours and you meet certain criteria mm. there are certain injections that you'll be given we call thrombolytics to dissolve the clot so that can mm. restore the blood flow mm. exactly so uh other means you can also use if it's ischemic stroke you can go directly this is done by the endovascular surgeons anyway mm. and they go into your blood vessels and then mechanically mm. just remove that blockage and then it restores the flow. the flow so within that three and a half hours the damage is less so recovery is much more better, better. than if you wait for a longer time and then more damage occurs and so you of course the recovery you expect at that stage is much much reduced compared to if you come early Okay. All right, doctor, I will continue with um, Lagos, but uh, let's quickly uh, see uh, our doctor in um, Ibadan. We are being joined by Dr. Oguntu Ayobami, Senior Register, Neurology Department, University College Hospital in Ibadan. Good morning to you, doctor. We are looking at stroke, its management, prevention, causes, and of course, symptoms. Uh, we've tried to identify the various um, kinds of stroke that we have. And uh, uh, we also have understood that um, early uh, um, you know, detection is key you know, to solving it. But for a whole lot of people who might not really understand, what are the peculiar signs and symptoms of stroke? Okay, is Ibadan ready for us? All right, let's just continue here in Lagos. Uh, Dr. Um, Musa, just, can you just explain to us what does uh, peculiar signs and symptoms of stroke? Okay, so uh, when somebody has a, a stroke, how do we know? Mm. Well, as I said earlier, what the patient is going to come down with depends on that part of the brain starved of blood supply at that particular moment. Mm. But generally, the common um, presentation is usually we call it the FAST acronym. F A S T. Mm. F is for the face. So yes. you find out that uh, they're talking to somebody, all of a sudden they tell you that uh, it's as if my face is shifted to one side. Mm. So we call that facial deviation. Okay. That's a common sign. The other one is an A, the arm. Mm. So they tell you all of a sudden, uh, we're just talking, and then all of a sudden he can't move his hand anymore. Mm. Likewise, the leg. So the A for arm. Um, can also go for the leg. Okay. So I'm talking or I'm walking along the road and all of a sudden I drop down. I'm still talking to you mm. if it's not so bad. And then they say, get up here. You can't basically lift your hand mm. or leg anymore. So there's mm. weakness on one side of your body or one part of your body. Then the S, S. in the first is speech. Mm. So again, suddenly they begin to talk as if there's water Slurred. in their mouth. It becomes yeah. slurred. Mm. 
as if he has taken excess quantity of uh, alcohol mm. and they begin to ask is there anything wrong with you those are very common uh, symptoms. symptoms the patient yeah. will usually come down with mm. that's not to say that's all but that's one that uh, very common is easily recognizable mm. okay easily recognizable now here okay uh, that they could also lose their motor abilities uh, movement and all of that okay that's well. what I, that's the weakness in the arm okay mm. yeah, so okay. yes uh, so if it's weak they can't move it anymore mm. how about the t the t the team is the time so you say okay. time is brain time is of the essence so they must get to the hospital once they recognize mm. the f the a and mm. the s so they present very early so the t there is time is of the essence very important can we look at the management now? We are okay. managing stroke. Okay. I mean, well, there's this common saying that um, is, if, when one is sick, it's not actually the person that is sick that yes. is actually sick, but the person taking care okay. of the sick person. So managing stroke now, what and how? What are the methods? Okay, uh, to when we say management of any uh, disease condition, it actually involves making a diagnosis, mm -hmm. okay. treating right at the acute stage and thereafter. After. After. So yeah. to make a diagnosis, it means you have to, uh, 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 first of all, do what we call a CT scan. Mm -hmm. After you've talked to the, probably the relative or whoever brought the patient to the hospital. Mm -hmm. If the patient could still talk, talk a little, that's getting the history, uh, it, you think this is a stroke, and then you send that patient straight to a CT scan, scan or MRI, preferably, or the, the gold standard is usually a CT scan. It's okay. shorter to take. Uh, done in emergency. So you, ideally, if we're, if we're services are available, as the ambulance is bringing the patient on phone, the doctor, emergency room doctor, the neurologist, everybody is, is being informed to take the patient straight to the CT suite. Okay. The sitting is done and then you come with the report and then that determines what type of stroke. Is it ischemic? Is it hemorrhagic? Okay. And then you move a step further to what do we do next? And then that's the treatment. Mm. Okay. From what we hear from reports, about half of people who have heart stroke, they barely live for more than a year. Okay. So what happens is that if you have a stroke, the chances of you having another stroke is higher. Mm. Mm. Because those risk factors that we mentioned earlier mm. are still there. They've not gotten away. So what you do if you have a stroke is to try as much as possible to control this, those risk factors thereafter. That's what we call secondary prevention. Mm -hmm. The deed has been done, but let's prevent the second mm. one. Mm. So you begin to attend to those risk factors. If it's hypertensive, you try and get it under control. Mm. If it's diabetic, get the sugar under control. Yeah. If it's highly paid, you bring it under control. And then if it's smoking, the person has to quit. Completely. Mm. So you take care of the risk factors. Mm. So it goes beyond just the hospital care alone, mm. even after discharge. For those that have weakness, then we come to rehabilitation. Mm. You must get them close to their normal life as mm. they used to as much as possible. But is there any chance okay. of um, complete um, reversal or recovery? Yes, 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 yes. That's, mm. that's what we say time is brain. So the earlier you come, there are a lot of things that determines uh, recovery. Mm. The time at presentation, mm. the severity of the stroke. Okay, how about after the whole, I mean, I'm talking about after now, is, would there, is there a need for a physical or occupational therapy? Yes, that's the rehabilitation. Okay. So you have a, when, when, you, when you talk about management or treatment of strokes, it's actually a multidisciplinary approach. Okay. We've talked about the doctors, which includes neurologists, emergency room doctors, the neuroradiologists. You also mm. have the occupational therapists, the physiotherapists, mm. the stroke nurses. Okay. So they do a lot of physiotherapy to try as much as possible for those that especially have weakness to get them as much as possible back on their feet, to let that, that part of the body the hands and the leg, mm -hmm. get enough power okay. as much as it can. Okay, but can they ever get back to being yes, the there are cases where yeah. normal Yes, there are like cases where people have had stroke and they walk beside you and you don't know. Mm. Mm. So we say they make, made a very good neurologic recovery. Wow. Mm. Why there are some, they made, make uh, some recovery. But if you take a good look, you know I have had a stroke before. Mm. Why some, unfortunately, uh, they may be bedridden. And then mm. the worst is some actually all oh, well, quite almost forty percent we die. We die. Yes. Wow. That's okay, really but um, further going, I mean the worst case scenario yes. of um, a stroke patient. I mean, outside of death, is there any possibility of um, leading the person into paralysis, complete paralysis? Okay, that's when they don't ha when they don't recover. So when there's a, a weakness mm. and the patient doesn't recover, depending on quite a number of factors. Mm then you must try it as much as possible. That's where re rehabilitation is a very important. It's key. Mm. 
So you try to make them cope with uh, as much activities of daily living as they can. They try to do as much, teach them, uh, it's not quite maybe once over months, weeks, how much of their former life can they still continue with. That's mm. where the physiotherapy is very important, the occupational therapist. So it, probably if it was a, a person that his job entails moving here and there, mm -hmm. and now he can barely move a hand or uh, the leg. So it means the job has to be changed. So mm -hmm. he have to get another job where uh, he can still function, but not with the one he has to move about. So where there are total paralysis, uh, it means uh, the caregiver has to do a lot of job. Mm -hmm. so it means the patient is bedridden. So mm -hmm. it, uh, uh, in Nigeria, the, that, that, that's usually the job of families anyway. But in developed nations, they have mm -hmm. care homes, yeah. they have rehabilitation homes. But if the patient is still at home, you have nurses coming to visit, mm -hmm. the physiotherapist coming to visit. It has to do with speech, the speech therapist. Mm -hmm. All of them come to play. Mm -hmm. okay. But most time in Nigeria, it has to do with the family. Okay. The husband and the wife plays a very major role. And you will agree with me that when it comes to stroke, uh, like you said, there a whole lot of people are involved, family, nurses, and all of that. The patient themselves often go through um, some signs of um, depression. Yes. How do you help them in okay, that? Okay, so we, we involve the, the psychiatrist. Mm. That's mm. one of the complications of, uh, uh, of stroke. Yeah. You have complications at various stages, yeah. acute complications, and then there are compl complications that are common in the long term. Yes for which depression is one of them. Mm. You see a, a, a chief executive can no longer attend meetings. <coughs> the money is no longer coming in. But as far as the family members are concerned, he's still alive. But for him, that's not good enough. Mm. So you bring in the psychiatrist and so they help out because depression uh, is a neuropsychiatric disorder. So they come out and help. That's why I said initially that it's a multidisciplinary approach. approach yes. Okay, but... Um, <coughs> Can we look at age now? I mean, <clears throat> in the late 90s, early 2000s, it was um, more of um, the elderly, maybe yes. from age 60. But there are cases where we have um, youth now yeah. having stroke. What, what could have transpired? What okay, so one thing we must get clear, first of all, is that stroke can occur at various ages, at any age. Children mm -hmm. have stroke, middle-aged people have stroke, elderly people have stroke. Mm -hmm. But one of the risk factors is age. Mm. As you age, your chances of getting stroke increases, particularly above 55 years. Mm. Mm. Because again, if you look at the risk factors, most of them, hypertension, diabetes, begin to appear mm -hmm. usually at that age. So that's not to say the others, do, the, the AA stroke do not occur in other ages. But uh, 50, 55 and above, that increased risk of having uh, Stroke. And then the reason why it basically uh, it appears to be much more common is as a result of westernization. Mm. We've adopted the uh, western way of life. Mm. Uh, the usual walking to the farm is no longer there. Kids no longer play outside as they used to do. So you find that that sedentary lifestyle we mentioned earlier now comes mm. into play. They become overweight, they become obese. Mm. And then again, um, they say in recent times, smoking has become fashionable. Mm. <laughs> and then diet again plays a major role. Most of us do fast food, mm. which is high in salt, which is high in cholesterol. Mm. Okay. Yes. Well, just so to